Chuck and Bob here with you to preview your high school basketball weekend and what a busy weekend it is. We'll start up in the state of Michigan. You know they're already about a third of the way through the season because they've played two weeks. Thanks, Governor. Anyway, <laughs> the war on the shore is coming up on Friday night. We have done this one before, Lakeshore and St. Joseph, and Sean Schrader's Lancers off to a nice start at 5-1. and one. They are, and here's the really good news. There might be a shore up there this week with all the <laughs> melting that's going on with the ice. But, uh, yeah, Lakeshore's uh, getting it done. They've got, uh, again, a quality lineup and I think an excellent program up there. And uh, they've been getting some uh, big uh, efforts out of uh, J.J. Bushu and also T.J. Mitchell. And Grant Gondrzak has mm -hmm. had 18 points in each of the last two games. You might remember his sister Kaiser played at Benton Harbor and is now at West Virginia. But don't count out the St. Joe Bears. Started out 5-0. They've lost their last two, so they need to get back on track. They've had some nice outings recently from Brennan Kearns, but he's got to have some help. Connor Wright would be a good place to start. Connor Wright would be a good, uh, a good addition to that, and they've... Uh, Joseph Brown has also shown the ability to be helpful uh, on this lineup. And they are trying to rebound after a couple of tough losses, so no better way to motivate them to play like sure. Always a fun experience up in the Bears' den. Let's take a look at what's going on in Indiana this weekend. It actually starts tonight. Interesting battle of Catholic schools. You've got Marion going over to Michigan City Marquette. We've seen Marion, of course, a number of times. You can always rely on Rob Berger's defense, but I think the offense is really clicking for the Knights right now. Well, and that's a big reason right there. And uh, Deglin Sullivan has been a great leader for Marion. He takes the ball inside. He's not afraid to go in among them. And uh, he gets it done and uh, does a good job defensively. They've got other people that are shooting from the outside and doing a good job. And uh, got enough size inside. But uh, Chuck, uh, the uh, the performance of Richard Brooks has been outstanding this year. And uh, your uh, favorite guy, Kyra Franklin. Playing well. Uh, he makes defense turn into offense. Now tonight they've got to go over to the Shoals Center. Take on this Marquette team that has five players in double figures. I really like a couple of their juniors. You've got Caden Manna, who's a walking double-double, about 14 points, 11 rebounds a game. They've got a guard by the name of Britt Harris, who's also a junior, 18.6 assists a game. That's a good starting place, but like we said, five and double fix. Yeah, Gary Lewis is a guy who can hit the three-pointer for them, and he's one of those guys that's able to score. And uh, also, uh, Lucas Balling is uh, another three-point shooter. Marion's got to get out on the perimeter against this team, and one thing they got to be very careful of, Marion is ranked sixth, and you don't want to overlook anybody, especially a 218. This is a nice test for both these teams right before the sectional. Another good test is over at Alumni Gym on Friday night. We've got a few coaching wins in this one. <laughs> You've got Ron Heklinski taking on Mark Johnson. That is only 885 wins between the two of them as Mishawaka will visit St. Joe. Mishawaka has been on the struggle bus a little bit as of late. They've lost four of their last five. Trent Johnson, Always steady. He's over a thousand points now for his career. Can some of the others step up? I think one of the problems with Trent uh, Johnson is that people now are watching him mm -hmm. and they're doing a little triangle and two. They're doing special things because they know he's the man for Mishawaka. But they've been getting some uh, good play out of Yohe as well. And uh, my favorite guy, Tommy Herringer, just a freshman, seems to do a very good job for them. But uh, Parker, Thomas, Williams, the other guys in that crew have to step up. Now, St. Joe, they have a player you may have heard of. His name's J.R. Kinesny. Here's a little fun fact about J.R., number 20. He needs just 11 points to reach 600 points for the season. The last St. Joe Indian to do that was Tommy Abernathy back in 1972. That's not bad. That's a... Uh... Uh, quite a lineup of players, too, that haven't reached 600 has been uh, at St. Joe. But Knessley's earned everything he's gotten. He shows up every time uh, there's a big game, and we have had him on, and every time we've had him on, he does a great job. And uh, Will Terry uh, can step up. Jack Fuda can do a little bit more. I like the move, putting Jack Quinn in the backcourt alongside Connor Litka. It's uh, been pretty effective for Mark Jones. So the Indians 16-4, and four, Mishawaka 14-6. and six. That's a good one on Friday night. Another one is in the NIC over in Rolling Prairie. The Adams Eagles come flying in with that 20 and one record. Here's a fun fact about Chad Johnston. He has now won seven NIC championships. That puts him behind only Doug Adams from Elston who had 11, Dave Hadaway from Adams who had nine, Dean Foster from Elkhart Central and Penn who had nine. That's pretty good company. It's great company. And don't be surprised if Chad doesn't uh, wind up there among the top of that list. Uh, he's just got a wonderful team. Uh, Chuck Worsham inside for the bucket. 
Uh, he's got uh, Columbus, who's playing well. Lynn King, guess what? He can hit a three-pointer. And they have uh, just uh, been so solid. And this is the second straight year they've gone undefeated so far. And this is a big game for them to wrap up that undefeated conference schedule. And uh, I would expect them to be really well-focused. To do that, they have to go to New Prairie and beat the Cougars. And you know who couldn't do that? St. Joe. Uh, New Prairie beat them at their place. And New Prairie has its best season perhaps ever. They've tied the school record for wins already with 16. And you see why here in this game against Bremen that we did uh, round up the usual suspects for the Cougars. Yeah, the Grady Lapchinski's doing a nice job from the outside. And uh, Rylan McBride is one of the top uh, players in the area along with Braden Flag. That's a nice uh, core to build around. They can uh, like to continue to build the program under Mike Bauer, who's done a really good job in his second year there. So Adams and New Prairie on Friday night. You know a place we have not been this year? We're at the end of February, and we have not been to the big barn on Bristol Street. Well, we need to change that, so I've got to make my annual pilgrimage to Northside Gym, smell the popcorn as we walk into the arena, and get ourselves ready for the 46th game of the week. Northwood taking on Elkhart. Let's start with the Northwood Panthers. Aaron Wolf's team has been streaky this year. They had a five-game win streak, five-game losing streak. Currently on the uptick with three in a row, and they are really young. They are young, and uh, again, we don't want to talk about next year. Let's talk about this year. But uh, Rash and Brenner have done a nice job inside, and uh, we're going to get our last chance to see uh, Ben Vincent on our regular season game of the week. And uh, they've had some other people step up, including uh, that uh, young man there is uh, able to help them. And uh, I think uh, they need all cylinders hitting uh, to beat out there. Well, the last two guys, Cooper Weens and Jamar Jackson, are really key swing players for Northwood's success. They will go over and take on an Elkhart team that is 11 and 10. Consistency has been tough for Kyle Sears' team to come by, but I still hold to the fact this is a dangerous team come sectional time, not only because they are young and you never really know what to expect, but I think Donovan Johnson and Malachi Emmons are starting to heat up. And Malachi Emmons has stepped into that starting role and done a nice job scoring the basketball. Chuck, this is almost reminds me of a potter's wheel where once in a while you get a, a vase going and then it falls over and you start again. He's done that. Kyle Sears has done that during the course of the season. He's had players in the lineup, players out of the lineup, and he continues to build. And as you said, you know, it's tournament time coming up in another week, and uh, Memorial will have uh, some some noise to make. Memorial. Memorial. Oh, turnover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Kyle been... Sears appreciates that out of you, though. Yeah. Uh, so it's Elkhart taking on Northwood. And we'll have that one for you Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9. And, of course, Saturday, a full day of basketball here on TV 46. We have all three girls' state finals that will be played that day. That means the 1A game at 11 o'clock, the 4A game at 8 p.m. And, oh, yeah, there's a little bit of interest in the 3.30 game around here because the South Bend Washington Panthers take on the Silver Creek Dragons, who are ranked number one in the state of Indiana. And Steve Reynolds' team, we've had them two weeks in a row, Bob. They've been spectacular. Haru is their big uh, battle cry, and they've uh, really been balanced. The Reynolds sisters have been outstanding. Uh, they get a real nice game from Spider, who uh, might be your favorite player on the team, uh, Jones. And uh, they also got some help. Uh, some of the younger players that have uh, developed as the season gone along have given them more depth. Franny Galicia played the game of her life last week in the semi-state. They'll want her against a strong Silver Creek team featuring Marissa Gassaway, who's a double-double. But they want to be able to hoist another trophy on Saturday evening, and they'll have that chance. But we mentioned Gassaway for the Silver Creek team. She's not the only weapon they have. This is a good squad. Yeah, you know, we've been talking about the sister act. It's been going on. It's unbelievable. Last week <laughs> at the Laporte Semi-State, we had four teams that had two sisters, including a pair of twins, uh, on the floor. So we're not talking about the Reynolds uh, sisters either. We're talking about Silver Creek. And they've got the uh, sisters, uh, the Stryverson sisters. And that includes Kennedy and Alana. And they're outstanding players, good team players. And they've got a good point guard in Sydney Sirota, who uh, handles things. But Marissa Gasway is going to be the big question. She's a big girl. they got three girls on this team that moved in from Kentucky. Why well, wouldn't you? are only 12 miles away. But this is a, a question maybe of chemistry. And if Washington's all been together, They've all uh, grown up together and uh, very well together. Maybe that's the difference in this game. I think it might also be a question of depth. Silver Creek not very deep. Washington can go about eight deep on its bench. 
and we will see if Steve Reynolds' team can kind of wear them out with the full court pressure that they like to use and the quickness that the Panthers have. Should be a lot of fun. Haru from all of us here. At Ever TV onward, Plus. you exactly. watch the Panthers. So we'll have that one for you Saturday afternoon, tip off at 3.30 on the IHSA Champions Network. Now for my broadcast partner, the Hall of Famer, Bob Nagel, it's Chuck Freebie, inviting you to join us this weekend for a great weekend of high school basketball.